Thank you, Gwen, and thank you, everyone. Um, I'm just going to just bring it all uh, into context as to why we're all here today. I think Sabrina, um, Cynthia, and Rebecca all really laid a great foundation as to why we need to have cost of care conversations. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how we can do that as advocates. and. Um, before I do that, though, I just want to share a story, uh, my own story, about why I feel so strongly about this. And some of you may be aware of it um, or have read it because I blogged about it on um, the NPAF website. But about a year ago, I um, had to have a procedure done. Um, it was something that had to happen quite quickly, so I didn't have a lot of time to prepare. Um, but Given my role here and everything I know about um, healthcare costs and surprise medical bills, um, I wanted to know whether or not my doctors and the anesthesiologists were all in network. And so the day before I was having the procedure done, I got a call from the scheduler who told me what time I needed to be um, to be at the um, at the facility. And I had asked her. I was just like, well can you tell me whether or not uh, the anesthesiologist is, you know, takes my insurance, I have Anthem. And she didn't know. She couldn't tell me who the anesthesia, who the anesthesia group was, otherwise I would have tried to do that research on my own. And so she was just like, you know, you can talk to the nurses or talk to the, um, uh, to the people who will be taking care of you tomorrow and you can ask them whether or not uh, your anesthesiologist is in at work. And so that's what I did. I showed up the next day when I was supposed to. Um, first person I saw was the intake specialist um, who you know, got my insurance cards, all my IDs, and all that uh, fun information. And I had asked her. I was like, do you know if the anesthesiologist is in network? She made a couple phone calls. And looking at her watch, she was just like, you know what, I, I don't know. Um, but you can ask the nurses once, once you go up uh, as they prepare you for your procedure. And so I was like, okay. Um, and this is something I had to get done. So went upstairs, um, you know, I put, I put on my hospital gown, I got hooked up to the IV, I had blood work done, um, and I asked the nurses. It's just like, do you know who the anesthesiologist is and whether or not they're in network? And they, they're looking at each other and, you know, like, we don't know, but let's, we'll find out. And so I was like, okay, feeling a little bit more optimistic. Um, they came back and they were like, you know, we don't know. Um, but if you have a billing issue, you can contact our billing office. And, and I was like, oh, okay. And they're like, oh, but the anesthesiologist is going to talk with you, you know, right before your um, procedure and you can ask her at that time. <laughs> and... So, you know, meanwhile, I'm try I, I still don't know who the group is. I don't know who the doctor, I, I think I asked for the doctor's name and I couldn't remember it, but had poor service inside the hospital. So I couldn't really Google who it was and whether or not they accepted my insurance. Um, anesthesiologist finally comes in and I was just like, do you accept Anthem? And she was just like, well, yeah. I d we do, and because she's like, and you know, she's like, I have Anthem, and you know, I had a procedure done here, and my you know partner administered the anesthesia, and I, I didn't receive a surprise medical bill. And I was like, oh, okay, well that's that's a relief, um, and thankfully she was right, um, but that whole experience was just incredibly frustrating. Um, I don't know why anyone could tell me, other than the anesthesiologist, and only because she had anesthesia <laughs> from, her, from her own group and had my insurance company. Like, she was the only person who could say whether or not I was in network or out of network. And for me, that just begged the question of how is this, part, how is this the process or how is this, you know, what it is right now and there really needs to be a change. Um, one of the nurses, when I had asked the question, she, she had said, you know, I had never been asked that before. And I know so many of you who I've spoken to who have had your own experiences with surprise medical bills 
all know now to ask whether or not a physician or a certain group or um, you know a certain therapy is either covered by your insurance or within your insurance network. Um, and so for me, that just you know, regardless of being nervous about that procedure and just you know, just that experience altogether, what that really hit home for me was just how we need to improve the system. And I think the way we do that is to equip people, people like you, with the right questions and the right um, resources so that not another nurse is saying, I've not been asked that before. I think if enough of us ask these questions, then they'll have no choice but to be equipped with answers for us, right? So that's why, that's why I'm here. <laughs> um, and here to talk a little bit about can we talk, I'll talk a bit about it or talk more about it tomorrow. I don't have the clicker. Um, but I just wanted to give you all a snippet of what we're, what we're doing with Can We Talk. Um, so I think some of you saw that it is, a, um, it is one of the projects or opportunities you all can do in your own communities. And um, there's information in your uh, booklet about it. But Can We Talk is our education initiative that we've started just recently um, to help you all go into your communities and educate everyone there, patients, caregivers, healthcare professionals, your policy makers, people in the grocery store, anyone, about what person-centered care is. And we are really building this out so that, you know, you all can just, as Sheila said, build a, your own community so you all know, or so they all know, how to have these conversations, not just with the physicians or the nurses that are in a hospital setting or in a, any kind of clinical setting, but also to, how, or also to have these conversations at home because talking about the things that matter to you are, is difficult, um, whether it's you know, talking with your loved ones, um, talking with anyone. And so we hope through this educational initiative that we really um, will help make it easier for people. Um, and you'll get a taste of what that is tomorrow. Um, but I just thought I'd you know, bring it all together. I think, again, Sabrina, Cynthia, and Rebecca just really laid out the foundation as to why we need to have these cost of care conversations. And can we talk is one way you all can help be a part of the how. How do we have these cost of care conversations? And so this is one resource that we created. Can we talk about what matters to me? And it's um, a handout that's included in your booklet. Um, but we hope to create more resources just like this. Uh, can we talk about costs? Can we talk about caregiving? Um, can we talk about insurance navigation um, or insurance coverage? I think these are all the things that everyone wants to know about um, and needs to know about. And so we're hoping that we can um, help you all be the change agents, the disseminators in your communities.